Hi everyone, and welcome to the very next Ask Chris Tuesday. Um, this is the show where I ask uh, answer questions that you guys ask me on my YouTube videos. And as of late, um, in order to keep the video timing down, I've only been asking four questions or answering four questions. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. Um, this is episode number 13. Yay! So, anyway, okay. Now, first thing I want to talk about is last week I did the um, tutorial for a top with a see-through yoke on it. Mm -hmm. And that's this garment right here. And then I added some little flounce here just so it wouldn't just be like a basic top with a see-through yoke. And then I also did this cute little neckline here which I thought was cute so hopefully if any of you guys are trying it in the future or have tried it already you won't have too much of a problem with it um, and other than that um, this week coming up this week um, is the tips of the week video this is the second one we're doing and this is going to be how to fit your back bodice so I'm excited about doing that and giving you guys another tips of the week video the last tips of the week video actually was was really good people liked it a lot more than I thought that they would and it, I was just talking about the two different ways to sew a sleeve and you know I got a decent amount of views on it and some nice likes and stuff and some good comments and stuff where people were like you know I, I was never taught the other way to sew the sleeve the method number one that I described where you just sh sew the shoulder first and then sew the sleeve into the armhole and then you sew the whole side up all at once some people said they were never taught that, so that's something that they were trying. So, you know, that's my goal with the show, just to give you something extra, maybe to show you a, a technique up close or something, you know, just something small. That way, now you know something new that you can take to your showing and be even more awesome than you were at first. So, anyway, um, so now let's get on to the questions. Alrighty y'all, so question number one is coming from New York A072890. <laughs> and um, they say, Hi Chris, so I have threaded my sewing machine, but every time I go to sew, the thread pops out of the machine. I am using my grandma's old machine from 1958. <laughs> Do you think I'd be better off buying a newer machine? Um. Quite possibly, yes. <laughs> you might be better off using a new machine. Um, there's no telling what's wrong with that machine, especially because it's so much older. Um, and I only know about the machine that I have, so I really couldn't even advise you to what could be wrong with that machine. <laughs> um, I don't know a whole, whole lot about sewing machines themselves. I just know different stuff to do with the machine. <laughs> um, what else can I say? Um, also, if, if there's a sewing repair shop or a sewing machine repair shop within driving distance that you could find or that you know about, um, I would go there and ask them. Um, I think sometimes stores like Joann's and Hancock's and different places like that, they will also repair machines. Mm. Or they can direct you to somebody who can repair machines, especially in the area that has the sales machines or the little area in the fabric store that um, sounds like embroidery machines and stuff. They should be able to help you or assist you or help you find some place that could, you know, get the machine fixed or tell you if you're doing something simple that's wrong. Um, and if not, you know, it's sewing machines nowadays aren't too expensive. You should be able to find a pretty good one for like a hundred dollars or less. Like the one I got was on sale for like seventy five dollars. Um, the one that I use in all my videos, so you could probably use that. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. Um, and so question number two is from Sunshine is my husband, and they say, um, first off, thanks again for all your helpful info. I want to start sewing, but I like wearing trousers, and since I'll need a body form to help with the construction of my garments, I was wondering if there are body forms for trousers as well as dresses in combination. Everywhere I look in the fabric stores, they only have forms for dresses. Can you give me some ideas? Yes. Um, two things, first of all. Well, let me first answer your question directly. 
yes, they do make dress forms for showing trousers or pants or leggings or whatever. Um, these dress forms can be found in two different places. Um, and one of those, or neither one of those places is the fabric store. Because the fabric store usually sells like the beginner style dress forms where you can um, make it bigger using the little turn dials. And those you can order in the store and they cost like a hundred and something dollars. The forms that you need are the more expensive forms, which are the professional grade forms. They don't change sizes, they just are one size. Um, a lot of times though, since they don't change sizes, you can get them custom made um, to a specific set of measurements that you provide or, you know, whatever. Um, and they'll make the dress for them specifically for you and then like you pay half down and then once they finish producing it you pay the other half either before they ship it or something like that um, but these dress forms are usually closer to like three or four hundred dollars maybe even upwards of six hundred dollars but it's a good investment because the dress form will last you for a very very long time and the measurements that you get from it will be you know extremely accurate um, and they'll help you be able to do something that you can't do normally by yourself. Like you can't take good measurements on yourself. Um, it's always best to have someone else take measurements for you. So if you could get those measurements off of your body onto an outside form, another separate form, then that would be so much more help because that form will always be there. Even if you have a model that comes over and helps you fix stuff, you just have to think that every now and then you might not be able to get in contact with that model or they might be doing something or they might live really really far from you but be the perfect size for all the garments that you make you know um if you can save up for a dress form that would be a very very good investment especially if you're serious about sewing or you know whatever you want to do with sewing even if you're not serious as far as you know i want to be a fashion designer but you just like making clothing and that's just something that really hits you down in the heart you know get a dress for that'll be a very very good investment um and then um most of the dress forms that i know of that don't change sizes they collapse in the shoulders you can push the shoulders in and that way you can get the garment on and off um so that's awesome and the the, the dress forms that change sizes they don't collapse in the shoulders so it's hard to get something over the shoulders a lot of times you have to take the whole dress form off the little stick and push the dress form down through the top of the garment it's crazy but anywho <laughs> um, it's doable so yeah if you just want something to start with you can get one of those dress forms but like in your case you need something for pants so go and you know get one of the more expensive dress forms um, you can either go to I think it's wolfdressform.com and I'll be putting a link in the bottom of the um, description here or you can also go to um, pgmjustform.com and they will give you um, a lot of good information. That's a place they sell sewing supplies and dress forms that they make and they're like green dress forms that are I think either biodegradable or they're made from recycled materials or something like that. Um, but anyway, that's a good resource. The Wolf Dress Form place just sells dress forms. But I have a Wolf Dress Form. Um, I didn't buy it, but it's my roommate's dress form, but I use it. So, anywho, um, that should answer your question very, very, very well. Um, let me know if you have some more questions, because I, I will definitely answer them. Um, question number three says, Hi, Chris. I've been watching you for a while. You are very good. Did you go to your school to acquire your bad to the bone skills or are you a natural? I am a beginner and currently I am working on making curtains, pillowcases, and easy stuff like that. But nobody taught me. I am finding my way. I wish I was as talented as you. Whew. God bless you. And that is from authoress Madeline Lugo. Uh, thank you very, very, very much, authoress. Madeline Lugo. <laughs> I'm like stumbling over your name. Um, 
I actually went through a combination of self-teaching and school teaching and my roommate, my friend taught me a lot of stuff. So it's kind of been a whole lot of different things um, how I actually learned how to sew. So, um, And then it all created this mosh posh gumbo brain of mine that has all this sewing information in it. Um, and also something that, you know, if you watch my videos all the time, um, you'll see that, you know, I always say, you know, it's, sewing is really, it's not hard. It's accumulative, like everything else in life. Um, you build on what you know already, and you use that to help you figure out how to make new things. Um, it's not that I just know how to make, you know, the Alexander McQueen dress because I saw some video that helped me, you know, learn how to make it. It's just, I took all these different ideas I had about how to make it and I kept going over them in my head until I thought of one that I figured would work the best. Um, and then some of it is just trial and error when you're actually working on the dress form. Um, so like the sleeve on the Alexander McQueen dress. I tried a different sleeve at first, or a different way of doing the sleeve. I was going to piece it together, um, and then I was like, no, I don't like how that's working. So I went back to my initial idea, which I didn't even try at first, uh, which was to just take the fabric and fold it in half and try it that way, because there's a big fold on the front of the arm. So, you know, it goes with, you know, being able to analyze your designs and being able to go through that whole process and saying, okay, this looks like a this, this looks like a that, that's a dart. This is a, you know, unfold scene. The front is unfold, the back is not unfold, you know, the opening is here, then this is that. Once you can kind of map out the garment, and it, you're, ta you're taking it from just being a dress on a picture to being something that, okay, now I have a concrete way that I can make this, you know. And it's simple like that. You know, the same way you would go with a pillowcase and you would say, okay, a pillowcase is basically a square. So either I'm going to make a square um, that's set on a fold so that it opens up to two squares and then you can close it and sew the three edges down or whatever and leave a slit in the middle, like a, like a pillow sham case or whatever. Or, you know, you have it on that one fold here and then it comes down, you sew it this way and you put, you know, a big hem on it so that you can put the pillow in one side. So, you know, however you choose to do it, it's that same process you go through. You kind of analyze what the garment is or the project is, and you kind of go through that whole process. So, anywho, um, 222C is only, it's good. I'm only doing four questions because I'm very long with it. But anyway, um, like I said, it's, it's so easy to sew. It's so easy to do a lot of different things once you have the, the skills and the knowledge and the experience. The only difference for me and you is the experience I have. That's all. I'm not, I'm not special, you know. It's just something. So, that's all. It's just experience. Anywho, um, do, 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 uh, question number four, very last question, uh, is from Freya number one. Hello. Um, she says, could you give tips on what would look good on certain body types? And I could. Um, that's a very, very good idea. It's so good that I'll be doing my next Tips of the Week video over that. So Tips of the Week number three coming up in two weeks. Not this week because this is number two this week. Skip a week for the time lapse tutorial. The next week I'll be doing the Tips of the Week video. Um, and that'll be number three and we'll be talking about what well, garments look good on different body types and I have a few ideas about that um, I'll go do a little bit of research on it too just so I can get my ideas together and see if anybody else thinks the same as me or maybe to put them all in the video and just have a big mosh posh of different ideas about what looks good and what doesn't on certain body types so Anyway, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So I will see you later. Thank you all for watching this episode of Ask Us Tuesday. Um, I will see you next Tuesday. So if you have some questions, please ask them in the comment section down at the bottom. And if not, then I guess I'll just see you on the next episode. Okay, bye-bye.